This is our podcast, We Grow Together by Gerber Finance. Hi, I'm Jen Palmer, CEO of Gerber Finance. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're the leading financing partner for companies experiencing accelerated growth to achieve sustainable profit. Here, we cover everything from partnerships, growth, profit, and culture. Are you ready to grow? Welcome to today's episode, Why Business Owners Should Care About Intellectual Property Protection. We are so happy to have Sarah Cohen, partner at the law firm Lombard & Galichter. Sarah has joined our podcast today to talk about the importance of intellectual property, which we will call IP, IP protection, as well as licensing for businesses. Sarah, thanks so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Jen. It's been so fun working with your team for the last few years, so I'm honored to be here. It's been great. Sarah is our outside counsel when it comes to all IP matters. So Sarah, thanks for making some time to allow our listeners to get to know a little bit more about what IP means and why it's so important. So let's just dig right into it. Let's just jump into it. Can you talk about your background and how you started working in IP? Yeah. So uh, I guess it's been 15 years now, which is crazy. I still consider myself a baby. I feel like we all don't realize we grow up and you're like, oh, maybe it's been five, 10. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this year's 15 years. Um, I, in law school, I found trademarks really interesting. I thought it was really cool that you could be a part of a company's journey without being a part of the company necessarily. So someone comes to you with a dream and they're like, make it happen. And then you get to see it on the shelves of CVS or Rite Aid. And it's just a really fun way to be a lawyer. Um, I don't know if many lawyers feel that way about their job. So I, I always say I hit the law job lottery when I became a trademark and copyright attorney. So it's been a lot of fun. And um, I really help people make their dreams come true to a certain extent. They come to me and they're like, I want this brand. And we we make sure it's available. And if it's not, we tweak it. And then we take it from there. It sounds so amazing. And I love that you have found an area of the law that's fun. And it's also really gratifying when you're able to walk into a store and see your product there. That's so cool. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's great. And um, we, we found that over time, you know, people come to us and there, there's the small businesses that have two pennies to their name. And then there's the big companies who are mid caps and, and they've already started working with someone and they realize they need someone with a bit more experience. So we've really been able to help people. It doesn't really matter if they're new to, to growing a business or they're in the middle of it. But we find that, you know, we can hold their hand and make sure they get to where they want to be. I love that. Oftentimes when I meet with young companies, even, even you know, uh, even more, more mature companies, they sometimes don't think about the value of their IP. They, they just haven't thought about protecting it. Can you tell our listeners why is it so important to protect your IP? Yeah, so there's definitely a few reasons. Um, the first is um, to, uh, to limit infringing um, and copycat matters in the future. So you're... I always tell my successful clients that the telltale sign of their success is that they have copycats. And obviously uh, for my clients, it's frustrating, but it does mean you've succeeded, right? Because people tend not to, they don't, they're not copying things that are selling off the shelves. So we are um, really focusing in on the value of protecting your brand to stop third parties from trying to copy it where possible. The other aspect of this is a lot of people start a company with the aspirations to sell um, to a bigger company. And in order to do that, one of the first questions a bigger company is going to ask, or even a lender is going to ask is, okay, show me your IP. And if you can't show them any trademark registrations or patent registrations, copyright registrations, they're going to be a bit weary of your business. They'll say, you know, I see you have sales, but what have you done to protect your business? So that's why it's so valuable to protect your intellectual property, not just to stop infringers, but also when you're thinking about what's your end game? Are you trying to sell to a big company? Are you trying to sell worldwide? Um, It's really important to think about those things. And you talk about copycats and infringers. So is it fair to say that if you protect your IP, that can actually help you accelerate your company's growth? 
Absolutely. So, you know, you can, by doing so, you can shut them down quickly. If you haven't filed for anything and they come along, then you have to go ahead and file for it. Then you have to wait for it to register. So when you first start and you automatically are thinking, okay, well, I'm going to grow this company. It's going to, I know I'm going to succeed. We need to protect ourselves at the beginning. And mm-hmm. I always say to companies, it's cheaper to do it in the beginning because if you don't, then not only are you going to be chasing these infringers in a more difficult and expensive situation, but you're also potentially going to have to fix errors along the way. Mm -hmm. So if you do the search, you make sure the mark is available and you start using it, great. You have this brand. Consumers are going to identify with you. But if it turns out that you didn't do the search, the mark isn't available, now you have to rebrand. So now you have to spend money rebranding, re-educating your consumers, which is a huge waste of your time and money as a business owner. So if you can just start on the right foot, do the work in the beginning, it'll always be cheaper and more cost effective and more successful for your business. That makes perfect sense. I mean, who needs any further distractions when you're focusing on, you know, moving a company forward and helping it grow? You certainly don't need to have nuisance lawsuits to get other people to stop, you know, copycatting you. That's, you know, definitely frustrating. And in addition to the legal expense, you know, there's all those intangible expenses that you just can't even quantify because of the distractions it brings into your business. Exactly. So great advice. No, the to time, do the resources, you want your staff focused on growing your business, not dealing with depositions. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So we keep using the term IP, intellectual property. Maybe can we just bring it back to maybe where we should have even started the discussion, but can you maybe explain to our uh, listeners what is IP and what kinds of IP is important to protect? Absolutely. So um, there's a few different types of intellectual property, right? So you have the trademark rights, which is your brand. That's what you're going to show to your consumer. And that's what your consumer will identify with you and the quality service or good you provide. So for example, um, Snickers bars, everyone knows that that's a product by the Mars company. And so it's very important to protect your brand because that's really what the consumer is attaching themselves to. That's your goodwill. That's that's what they associate with your good quality service or good. There's also copyrights. Copyrights protect an idea that you've created and put into a fixed form. So if you come to us with an idea and you're like, I want to protect it, it's not enough. You have to um, make a cookbook or a book. You have to um, sketch a drawing, even websites. So once you take your idea and you put it into some form that's either visual or audio, then you protect your copyright. Um, The last one, the last big uh, carve out is patents. And those are for inventions. Inventions were typically thought of as, you know, um, a typewriter or a telephone, but now patents are a broad scope. Patents cover medicine, patents can cover potential business strategies. And so those are the three big IP different types of IP. And it's really important to think about how you can protect them for your business. And sometimes businesses don't have things that are protectable on the patent side, but they usually still have trademark and copyright protection. So our team can, you can come to us with your ideas or, you know, any IP attorney, and we'll be able to flush out where you can protect yourself and, and grow. I bet there's a lot of business owners at home thinking, oh my goodness, I never thought about my IP and they want to call you immediately. So how do they get started? What are what are the initial first steps that they should do in order to prepare for a meeting with you or just, you know, in general protecting their IP? Yep, absolutely. So we'll have a quick chat. We can, you know, get a sense of what you're doing and, you know, the initial thoughts of who we should pull together. I have a a small team of six and we handle patents and trademarks and copyrights and also contracts, pretty much everything you need to get your small business or growing business going in the right direction. And so I'll pull together the relevant team players. We'll have a quick call. And then from there, we'll move forward and strategize. Okay, it looks like you need to start with your trademark applications. Are you doing business in the US? Are you going abroad? We can focus on, you know, what markets and what intellectual property will will help protect you and grow your business. So it sounds like you'll really take care of all the documentation needed. Is there anything else that the business owner should perhaps bring or that you want to touch on as far as what the documentation looks like? 
you know, a, a lot of uh, new business owners uh, get into a position where they're just borrowing documents. They'll go online and they'll take someone's privacy policy or terms of use. Um, that's really not a good idea because someone else's, even if they're in the same industry, is not going to protect you. Um, and the problem is now California has passed this consumer protection privacy law that really you don't have to be a California business. You can be anywhere um, selling your goods and services. And that's the wave of what's going to happen in the U.S. You're going to see much stricter privacy policy. So it's really important that the documents you're using were drafted for your company and not just borrowed from another website or another company. And we can help you guys with that, whether it's an NDA or an independent contractor agreement to make sure that the documents you actually have for your business protect you as a business. And I know it's not an overnight process to get IP registered. Are there certain challenges or setbacks that company owners should be prepared for? Um, yeah, you know, the with on the trademark side, the trademark office due to COVID is seeing pretty big delays that we hadn't seen before COVID. So before you would have about a year to, from the time you start to the time you register, we're seeing longer times now, which is even more important why you need to come to us so we can get going. Um, the other thing is to keep in mind when you're picking a name to make it not just descriptive of your goods and services, because if it's just describing what you're doing, the trademark office is probably going to say no. But if you make it somewhat a play on words or something interesting, something a consumer wouldn't know exactly what it is, you'll be able to get better protection for yourself. You talked a little bit about how the pandemic has changed the process. What about IP in general? Have you seen any changes as far as valuation of IP goes um, or anything else IP related from coming out of the pandemic? Yeah, I, I think you see um, well, a big delay uh, on on the bureaucratic you know, intellectual property side. The trademark office and the patent office um, were partly remote and partly in person beforehand. They had to go fully remote. And so we're seeing pretty big delays. And that as a brand owner can be very frustrating because mm -hmm. if you want to know that you can move forward, um, you, you want to do so safely. So th there's that. But also companies that um, have a bigger online presence are tending to be more successful on the valuation side, mm -hmm. which is unsurprising, I think, in general. But I think it's going to be really important that you protect yourself in that class. So there's a class of services um, which handles online services. Uh, businesses in the past might have only filed for the goods they were selling. So let's say you're a t-shirt company and you sold t-shirts. Um, you can all, if you have an online store, you can also protect yourself in that class. So to make sure that you're carving out your space. Now your experience, although, you know, you're an intellectual property attorney, you're working with companies across a wide variety of industries. So you've got, you've got some experience in almost every industry. Are there any specific issues coming out of the pandemic that, you know, you think it's, you know, notable to talk about? Specimens have been a bit tricky. So um, I think due to the pandemic, the trademark office has become a little more particular about um, in to get your trademark registration, you have to show you're actually selling the good or service. And so they're they're being a little pickier. So your website needs to vary if you're selling services, whether they're financial services mm -hmm. or cybersecurity services, your website should pretty clearly explain what you do and how someone can obtain your services. I understand people for services typically don't want to put their pricing information on their website. That's fair, but you still have to make it very clear, you know, that this is what you're offering, this is how to obtain it. Because unfortunately, the USPTO needs it very, for lack of better words, maybe dumbed down. They like it needs to be very clear what you're doing and how you're doing it for them to give you a rubber stamp and say, okay, this isn't just someone throwing up a website to pretend they're doing it to secure a registration. So make it easy for them. Make it yeah. exactly the easier. Yeah. Make it the more clear your website is, the more likely you, your specimen will sell through and you'll get your registration. So we talked earlier just about, you know, you want to make sure that you register early on because it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. But here you're saying, but you've got to have a real business, right? So you just can't do it before you, you know, before you actually have a business. So make sure you're in business, you're really selling, you know, but don't wait any longer than that. Um, well, there's actually an interesting caveat um, in, yes, to, to get the registration, you're right, but to actually just... Um, 
preserve your rights essentially. So if you come up with this business, but you don't have cap, you're waiting for your capital to come through, or you're um, still trying to produce the product, you're stuck in manufacturing given COVID, what we can do is while we can't get you a registration right away, we can still file your application and the application will serve as a placeholder. It will tell the world that you, in fact, are going to use this mark and uh, you just need to eventually start selling the good and it buys you a few years to do so. That makes perfect sense. So, you know, if companies, business owners are thinking about doing this in the beginning, I know sometimes they're worried just about the cost associated with building a portfolio. Do you want to just touch on that for a bit? Absolutely. So the cost for on the trademark side actually isn't uh, terribly high. To do searches uh, in the U.S. for a, a mark, it would be about $575. And then when it comes time to prepare and file the trademark application, that will also be $575 plus the government fees. So we're not talking about exorbitant amount of money, right, to, to get that initial protection. You know, at some point you might decide, okay, this business is a success. I want to file in Australia and Canada, the EU. We can handle that for you too. And, you know, that will obviously entail a bit more expense, but by then you'll see your business growth trajectory, understand what you need to protect. But to get that initial protection in the U.S., we're not talking about a substantial amount of money, and that will go a long way. That's great advice. Before we wrap, any other advice that you would give small, rapid growing companies who are just starting out? Yes. Um, do your due diligence. Start, you know, if you if you don't and if you don't want to, call us. That's fine. There's no judgment. <laughs> There's no question that's too stupid. People ask me all the time, or they'll say, ah, this is a dumb question. I'm like, we've whatever dumb question you come up with, I promise I've heard something worse. So it's okay. Um, don't be shy. But also, you know, spend some time poking around online before you come to us if if you want to, because it'll save you time, money, aggravation. Sometimes people come to us and they, they're like, oh, I love this. And then I look at it online and there's someone that has the same exact mark doing almost the same thing. And that'll save you time and money as a small business too. Well, and I can, you know, attest to people have asked you dumb questions. It's certainly me and you have the most patience. So thank you for walking us through, you know, the most dumb questions and as, of course also handling the most complex matters. You are just such a pleasure to work with and you make our life easy and you give us that protection that we we need, but most importantly that our clients need as well. So Sarah, thanks for all of your time and energy over the past several years, as including today. I think this was such a great conversation and I know our listeners are really going to benefit from listening to your advice today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. And if anyone has follow-up questions, never be shy. Oh, thank you. Well, we always wrap with our growth tip of the week, and this week it's easy. Sarah gave us such great advice today, but one of the things that she talked about really hit home, invest in your IP early because it's absolutely critical to keep your business growing. You want to continue on that growth trajectory, and this will help you fend off any of the copycats. It will also be less expensive if you do it early. Again, great advice today. If you have any questions for Sarah, please do reach out to her. And if you have any questions for me, you can reach me at info at gerberfinance.com. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast today. Please remember to rate, follow, and subscribe. Have a great week.